It's time for Bourbon with Friends, the bourbon podcast that never takes itself too seriously. Pull up a chair, grab a glass, and remember, a bourbon with friends can change the world. Here we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Bourbon with Friends. Myself, Adrian, and Martin are excited to talk about whiskeys from around the world and how a bourbon with friends can change the world. How are you guys doing? Doing really good, man. How are you doing? Dandy. I have a pretty yeah. good glass of whiskey with me right now, yeah. and I'm talking to you two. So. What about Adrian? What's she up to? Well, she's right there. How are you doing, Adrian? Yeah, yeah pretty, pretty, much, pretty much the <laughs> same. I got a glass here, and... No, just ready to do this thing. Yeah. What are you guys' opinions on sub sandwiches? Like, I what's your favorite them. place to get them? From? What's what's your favorite place to get one from? Uh, I'm asking for a reason. Okay. Uh, I usually just go to Subway. I I mean, I have a lot of options living where I live, but I usually just go to Subway. Brian, I don't eat. <laughs> too many carbs anymore but when i did okay. it was firehouse subs firehouse oh, subs are very yeah. good they're very yeah. good they yeah. do have good subs yeah yeah um uh, uh so i usually do uh i almost said jersey johns <laughs> jersey mike's jersey, well jimmy johns but um <laughs> Yeah, so I usually go with Jimmy John's, but there is a Jersey Mike's in there. With, uh, my sister and myself yesterday were having the argument of which one's better. So I didn't know if you guys had an opinion on that that we could do oh. here at the beginning of a podcast about whiskey. To talk about if I had to pick between those three, I would probably go with what Brian said, the Firehouse Subs. They have a New York steamer. It's like a pastrami sandwich that's really Ooh. good. That sounds okay. better than a Cleveland steamer, to be honest. Uh, so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We can try both. It's fine. Um, <laughs> so, oh, no. <laughs> um, I'm afraid to even ask. <laughs> Urban Dictionary. Urban Dictionary. Okay, got, got it. it. Yeah, you'll yeah. see it. It's it's fun. It's something you can do with friends, um, but not bourbon okay. with friends. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Um, but no, like, so if you guys do go get the sandwiches, like, what what's this, what's an appropriate size? Of sandwich of, sa of sandwich. I'm going to repeat that. What's an appropriate size of sandwich? <laughs> What's an appropriate amount for you to get to consume in a day? Okay, in a day? Oh, not in a day. Oh, I was just thinking, like, when you go to order one meal, what size would you get? So I get the giant, which is, um, I think it's two, two foot longs, right? The giant, something yeah. like that. I think so. So I've had two of those today. Is that too much? No, you're skinny, no. so you need you need a you need to yeah, gain I, a little weight. The carbs. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I so would, it's okay I that I it's okay that I bought long. four sandwiches. Then. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think so. That's fine. <laughs> okay, I was just checking. I was just checking if that's gluttony oh. or not. Um. All right, but yeah, no. So speaking of and Brian, I, I, I think we should bring in our guest. Because we're talking about large sandwiches, and we want to talk about one of the largest distilleries, new distilleries in Kentucky. Bring them on in. Hey, Ray, how are you doing? This is Ray Franklin, everybody. Ray is the founder of Staghorn. Is that correct, Ray? Correct. And I'm going to mess up the county, so you might as well just say it before I do. Harold. <laughs> Garrett County. Garrett Gar Gar County. Garrett. Yeah. Yep. Perfect. Well, welcome, Ray. We it's a pleasure to have you on. And we're gonna talk about a bunch of different whiskeys and a bunch of different questions and hopefully have some fun with it. Perfect. Appreciate y'all having me. Thank you. You're Ray, welcome. Uh, Ray, do you have an opinion on sub sandwiches by chance? Like what's your favorite place? <laughs> uh well, my favorite place is the closest one, Jersey Mike's. Okay. Yeah, I, it's, I agree. It's, it's all logistics. It is logistics. Yeah. 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 yeah they they get uh, uh, Jimmy John's gets to me quicker, so that's why that's why they win. I was just curious. Uh, we can go into we can talk about whiskey now if you guys want to. Okay. 
Well, hi, Ray. It's good to see you. Um, can you tell us, uh, I know you've been in the industry for a little while, so maybe give us just a little bit of background of what you've done over the years and then maybe more so about what your role, what you're doing now. No, absolutely. I've been in wholesale distribution, route to market strategy, or in a distillery for the past 25 years. Um, from toting a bag back early 2000s, um, selling wine in Kroger and Publix. Uh, and I was like, shit, the spirits guys are off at one. I'm working at seven. I'm doing this wrong. Uh, started selling spirits, right? And then it's like, oh, well, I'm getting off at one and playing golf, but I think the manufacturing side is is where the money is at. And um, so after many, many moons carrying a bag, I guess 2014 or so, had a friend that wanted to basically have a retirement business, which is kind of a pot steel operation. He had a hybrid, two, two fin dome pot steels. One had a hybrid column uh, on it for stripping runs. The other was you know, to just get the process started. So um, work with them to get that open in 2014. It was called Steelhouse Creek. I was really good friends with a guy by the name of Dave Pickrell. Y'all may know Dave, um, Maker's Mark and Whistlepig fame. Um, so we got him to help us, uh, you know, kind of put everything together. And I guess it was Thanksgiving week of 2016, Zach Brown and the Zach Brown band walked in and said, Hey, we'd like to be a part of this. And as many folks who don't know what they're doing when they build a distillery, we were about out of money. So the timing was great. Um, so <laughs> we ended up selling to Zach Brown. I think he, um, he in turn uh, maybe closed it down a year later. So I'm not sure where they are with it now. Um, but prior to Dave passing away, was pretty instrumental in saying, "Hey, let's, you know, let's get into large scale manufacturing. We can backfill craft brands. Um, you understand the sales side for your brand and other things very well. I can help you with distillation. Let's go." And so we took off to raise capital. Of course, Dave passed away, and um, I was able to pick up the ball and continue running with it. And um, got all the capital raised and quietly built one of the largest distilleries in the country in the middle of a global pandemic. So here we are. That's a big pat on the back. I mean, I think it is. I, I appreciate so, it. Yeah. So uh, the whiskey we're talking about today is called the All Nations Whiskey. It was named from the posters that hung in bars during Carrie A. Nation's Temperance Crusade in the 1800s. Uh, with her infamous hatchet, the posters read, "All nations welcome except Carrie." So I want to I want to give a little background of what I read about her. It says, by her own account, she used rocks, a sledgehammer borrowed from a blacksmith, and a barroom billiard ball to destroy five Kansas saloons before taking a hatchet to destroy a saloon in Wichita in December of 1900. So, with all that said. I read a lot about her and I just thought it was, I, I really went down a wormhole with it as you can tell, but what prompted you guys to name the whiskey after her? So Garrett County is the birthplace of prohibition. So Carrie was born there in, you know, between 1840, I guess, 1846. Um, we have her birthplace home. We went to visit it uh, when we were looking at counties uh, in the front end of where we were going to be located. And Garrett County is full of history for two governors, uh, Cary Nation. I mean, the list goes on and on. The longest continuously operated courthouse in the state of Kentucky. And so it's just rich in history. They had, they had a distillery there 112 years ago. Brook Hill Distillery was there. Um, but what really stood out to us was the – Carrie Nation story, right? It was, it was American history. Um, it's a pretty big deal. She's uh, the responsible for two amendments, right? So women's suffrage and prohibition. So for one, we just thought it was a super big deal um, what she had kind of done to get any amendment or anything done in government, right? It's a big deal. Um, yeah. So we're like, gosh, you know, this, her home was in disrepair. It was, you know, a slice of American history. 
And the story was just, you know, it was too good to be true, really. It's, it's a little different than your typical, as I affectionately call them, you have your dead old guy brands, right? We have a dead old lady brand. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it was a true, true story of real American spirit, right? Now, we don't really right. agree with with where she was headed with it, but it is just American at its core, right? Just uh, yeah. you know, that passionate about it to go strike out across yeah, the country. Yeah, she was... She was a tough old lady, right? She was a tough <laughs> old lady. She was oh. six to uh, a menace, a uh, pretty towering woman you didn't want to mess with. So I just thought the story was super cool. We had a slice of American history. We had the house. We're in the county. I was like, you know, this, it's kind of all adding up to us. It's a great story. So, um, and when we found the property, the cool part was, They've since changed it. the The city was wet and the county was dry, so the we rebuilt our home was in dry county, but you could walk to the distillery in the city that was wet. So that was going to be a little part of the story. But the county got so excited they pulled a vote and passed. Now the entire place is wet. So um, we won't tell anybody that. We'll leave it like it was. <laughs> Well, that actually brings us to the next question. I mean, it's amazing what you're doing, and especially in your county and with all the job opportunities you're providing. It's how many do you provide in your distillery alone? Is it over? I'm not going to speculate. I'm not going to ask. I'd, I'd rather just get it straight from the horse's mouth. So, yeah, yeah. We're the second largest employer in the county, and I believe we're up to 56 employees now. So, oh, wow. That's awesome. That's yeah. Awesome. Per- Pretty new too. I mean, we're only seven months old, right? Going on eight <laughs> months. So, pretty proud of that. Well, seven months old have fifty-two employees. Is that correct? Fifty-two 57. employees, seven months old, and we just made barrel twenty-five thousand Friday last week. Twenty-five thousand wow. in That's seven crazy. months. Well, sir, I can say that is an amazing accomplishment. What you are doing is providing job opportunities and careers for individuals in that county. And not only that, but helping sustain smaller craft distilleries all around the country uh, with products that you're distilling for them. So kudos to you and thank you for doing what you're doing. No, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's a lot of fun, too. So <laughs> we're having a good time. I mean, it's whiskey, right? So. It's pretty cool to be able to take care of the families in that county. And the people in the city and county have just been amazing. We actually opened Friday um, just to the county and city locals for the first time sell for bottle sales. And we'll start tours here in the next 30 days. So it was a big deal. Oh, they, wow. That's amazing. Yeah, nice. they came out pretty strong for us. So we were happy about that. I bet that would be a fun tour just to be able to be a part of you know, someone telling that whole story and cause her house, you guys had her house moved to the property, right? Her birthplace home. Was it, was it moved there? Did I read? Yeah, we moved it there. It's me and four other gentlemen. Actually, we moved it block by block. It was a hundred and you know, 50 tons of stone. So that's crazy. Wow. Yeah. I'd be in really good shape if I did that or really broken. (laughs) (laughs) Like I didn't even want to move this water bottle earlier because it was in my way, and like that's that's a whole nother ball game. That's a that's a lot of commitment. Mm. Yeah, you just did have two feet in your mouth, Martin. So I know. I tell you a cool story. We uh, that's a glass. Pontificated that it was built in 1840, and we found a couple timbers out of the flooring. I think they were reused from another house, but we brushed it off. Uh, and on the side, it has August 8th, 1798 carved in that's crazy it's wow so pretty that's, cool stuff that, is well, that gives you chills yeah, yeah. Two that's... years after the revolutionary war started started wow yeah that's absolutely insane so i want to get into another question um yes, sir. you you started your distillery building it during an economic downfall almost right where everything was shutting down construction was shutting down and you were building a distillery at this time and then this economic boom happened i'm 
guessing in your county once it started back up and you're producing all this product, what's it like to have that switch from one big downswing to where people are telling you you're doing it at the wrong time, this is not right, to showing people now in the county that it's bringing money to the county, it's opening up new doors, it's giving employment, it's helping people out. What, what's that play like there? Well, it's very rewarding, right, to, to help people, especially I think Garrett County is one of the poorest counties in, in Kentucky. So it's just fabulous to be able to bring, you know, jobs and revenue for the county and especially the people there. Um, you have it. If you were to meet the people there and ask them about the distillery, you wouldn't know we haven't been there 30 years and just seven months. I mean, people are so proud of, of the project um, and what we've done. And it's, it's just been awesome. It's been very rewarding, like you said, to, to build that. And people are like, oh, my gosh, the, you know, the world's shutting down. And just to come out the other side, it's been pretty cool. And like I said, well-received and the brand's doing doing well as, as uh, it can be as well. So we're just, I mean, very fortunate to be where we are today. Well, like yeah. I said, kudos to you for everything that you're doing, especially helping out the county, helping out the people that are there and giving so much joy to that town, it sounds like. So thank you for doing that. Absolutely. We're, we're pretty close with the city and county. They've been out there on the property working for the past three to four years. I mean, we, you know, it's nothing to see. It's like Mayberry, right? You know, there's the sheriff right. and there's the mayor. Yeah. You know, they're dropping in all the time. So it's just been really cool to get to know everybody there. They've been really good to us. And uh, they, they, trust me, they support us more than, than most get in, in other counties in Kentucky. So cool. I love happy. to hear that. Yeah. Well, ultimately that'll, I mean, you would think with a large employer like that in any smaller community or smaller town, it's going to bring, I would think that would attract more business and more, I don't know, more, more businesses, I guess that's the only way I could say it. No, Maybe absolutely. Not. It has, we've brought uh, another group. <clears throat> that's kind of followed us and third party barrel storage just showed up. There's co-packing facilities. There's also some unrelated, uh, you know, other industry business that are coming to Garrett County. Our project um, had immediate impact to upgrade of the water system there. They upgraded the, wow. the power grid because of our project and they upgraded the natural gas pipeline through the city. So it all, it saw some immediate, you know, results. Yeah showing up in town and because of that it's allowed the infrastructure to build out on the north side of town so i think they will be able to bring in a lot more industry here as we we get to move it and shake it with the distillery yeah restaurants like i guess that's what i was trying to say when i was talking yeah. about like restaurant would be good yeah. there's there are no restaurants so. <laughs> one would be nice Sounds like nope. an opportunity. <laughs> it sounds like I may be just opening up a restaurant and having someone <laughs> in your town run it. That's it. That's it. Well, it's one of those instances where you're like, why would anybody go there? And then you go there and you watch in the morning, you know, 10,000 people leave to go work elsewhere. Right. Uh, and they're all coming back and nobody stops there to spend a dime on gas or food or, or groceries. So we're, we're hopeful to change that for for lancaster and garrett county so wow uh, that's amazing to hear so last thing i got for you until martin takes over and he he will take over um it's true let's talk about what you sent us your single barrel bourbon. single barrel you get the small batch too just, no, just a single barrel yeah, yeah it's just, just a single, single barrel. barrel yeah 111 proof uh, barrel number three hundred three thousand eleven twenty two. Thirty one. So, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit about this? I couldn't find a lot on this particular one. So, we like to play close to the vest. Obviously, yeah. we have. Um, so we have about seventeen thousand barrels of aging sourced whiskey. Okay. Um, with the lion's share of that being from Danville, Kentucky. So I'm sure you can put two and two think, together and figure that one out. Kind of, sort of. So, so is this a blend then? Is, or 
No, it's a single oh, no, barrel. That, 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 was, that barrel. was stupid. Yeah. That was dumb. It's fine. Ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't seen Adrian live, she's blonde. <laughs> so yeah. Well, now that we're doing video, you can see that. So. Well, and I, you know, I'm never claimed to be all that knowledgeable about whiskey ever. So I'm learning. I'm well, the the one endearing. trying to learn here. So um, I learned something new every day too. And like my friends would say, he's better at other things. So don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, me too. Me too, Ray. Me too. <laughs> she is, she, she she, she is also the voice of reason between uh, myself and Brian. So that's, um, that's a hundred percent. That's helpful yes. to, yes. to, um, keep uh, us in line. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah, you're, you're enjoying a high rye, um, bourbon there. So I oh, think high that's, perfect. Yeah. 24 or 36% rye bourbon. So, Oh, wow. Really? Yep. Mm -hmm. I like that. That doesn't and, like it. I, yeah. I like that too. And I don't know. I don't think we put an age statement on there, but everything is between four and seven and a half years old. So I'm sure that's yeah. somewhere in that five or six range. Typically, I will like to put out in the single barrel. Well, I can say I like it. It's really yeah. good. Awesome. I, so. I enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, clearly I'm enjoying yeah. it. So. <laughs> it even says it on I the like bottle. Whiskey. All nations are welcome. And then it says, except carry on the back. Yep. <laughs> well, that's great. And thank you for sharing this bottle with us. And we'll uh, be, look, Martin's been sharing it with himself and maybe some friends. And I've been sampling it out and sending it to there. some people. So thank you again for yeah, providing that. Yeah, that's when the, the bottle's low. So. No, so I. Um... <laughs> <laughs> you, you never want to show up. Right to the podcast. No, 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 no. This is like it's just like oh. it's. Like, uh oh. No, actually, yeah. I did. Like, I got to bring this too. So I do. Uh, I do bottle shares out here with them, um, and I have a new group of friends who are just getting into whiskey, and um, I like to bring them stuff that they would not otherwise be able to try, uh, because yep. I feel like I feel like they are a little bit stuck in the. Um, how can I say this? They're stuck in that kind of like only drinking like Buffalo Trace and oh, yeah. and, 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 and listen, I think they make great whiskey, but uh, I, it's just like I want people to venture outside of it, especially people who are new and to try things that they maybe never would. So obviously, since I have that opportunity to I shared this out and this was this was a, a clear winner. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this, I was making some cocktails and I'm not, I'm not a big cocktail guy, but I got to say it makes a good cocktail. I don't know awesome. if it was just, yeah, I, I did an old fashioned with it and I did a uh, Manhattan with it. Um, and again, don't usually like those types of drinks, but it was, it, it, it worked for me. I wanted something high proof bourbon uh, yep. to use in a cocktail. And I was like, let me, let me try this just to see. Cause I, mm -hmm. I feel like it, I feel like it had a very good uh, um, a profile or something like that, but I love it, obviously. Nah, man, that's fabulous. Yep. If you like me yeah. too. It neat and cocktail, that, that's a win. That's a win. Yeah, I haven't tried it just over ice. I usually don't do just ice. It's either cocktail or it's normally yep. neat, but yeah, it's just it's got a it's got. I, I am a big. I'm usually more of a like when it comes to a mash bill. Like I do like a, a higher wheat typically, but I've been finding like lately if I've been trying stuff blind or I've been like getting into stuff where I don't exactly even know the mash bill, higher rye has been something that I've been gravitating to a lot more no. lately. So definitely. Yeah. I'm the same. I like those high, high proof, you know, one twenties plus, but everybody in our, our shareholder groups like, man, aren't you going to make one that's not as strong as this? I'm like, yeah, I guess we could. <laughs> so, yeah. Here's a hundred proof. Calm down. But yeah, why would we do that? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what? Are you, are you typically someone who likes higher proof whiskey or do you? Uh, do oh, you absolutely. Like I yeah. love just cast strength. Um, because you really get the true character of the whiskey and then the barrel that it came out sure. of. And if you, you know, if you want it at 111, we'll add water. I mean, that's the way I yeah. see it. If you want it 107, that, you know, you can get it to where you like to enjoy it and not where um, I like to enjoy it. So yeah. it's all subjective and you know, the end uh, user needs to be, be happy and, and want another one. Yeah. I've been trying to tell people that to use water a little bit and find like, I use like an actual like uh, eyedropper so I can actually oh, yeah. see, the see the measurements. So I can see like, like, okay, I like this one at this one and I'll write it on the back of the bottle. Um, do this with three oh, drops yeah. or something like that. So 
especially when it's higher proof. But there's some higher proof that I, I don't want it altered. I just want to go in like this one. I haven't put any water in it because I feel like it's got that that bite that I just love. So it's pretty just, perfect, like, really. It's really it is, in a yeah. nice a place, uh, honestly. Yeah. You yeah, should see no, him when he mess, mixes up the eyedroppers, though. I uh, know, right? Oh, yeah, that got weird one time. <laughs> um, I won't go into it now. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> no, but it's very good. But I guess uh, a, a question I have is because, you know, obviously based on, like, your background and everything you've done in this industry, do you have, like, a, do you have, like, a favorite role that you've ever had, like, a, a favorite position, a favorite role within, like, within this industry? Well, I really enjoyed the, the, and I don't know that it was necessarily a role, but the design build phase of the distillery, okay. um, you know, just being able to, cause I've been, I'm a, I'm a big bourbon fan too. And I'm a big fan of all the characters in the industry. And, and I'm kind of the, uh, I'm kind of the dog that caught the truck, you know, they're not <laughs> People, you know, most people are being like they're a distiller for 25, 30 years and they, you know, then they go build their own distillery. You know, I was a sales rep. I was immersed in it with a lot of those talking heads like Dave and, and all these other folks. And I thought, man, this the space is just so cool. The people are just so cool. You know, I was like, I want to do this because everybody was, uh, you know, outside of right, some fanboys. <laughs> Everybody's really cool and is really helpful and thoughtful. And I thought, man, these are, um, you know, these are people I like want to hang out with. Right. So it was, it was more of who you want to hang out with, what you want to do. Um, the industry was super cool. People were super cool. And man, it's just, you know, for me back to the question, right. was just being able to, to, to be in that design bill phase and then really be able to talk to the Shanes and Pats of the world and, you know, Dave's and all these, these guys we had input from, you know, Jim Rutledge. I mean, you name it, all the, the guys, you know, I know. And that was so cool to me. Cause it was like, it's like playing baseball in college, you know, high school and college. And then you get to play pros with the guys you've been watching play the whole time you've been in school, you know? So that's kind of how yeah. it felt me to to get in here and i was like just had so much fun on the design build space because i got to talk to all these brilliant guys that that have either you know built a massive brand or just their legacy guy or you know whatever so that was kind of the most fun trust me there's no no fun in carrying a bag schlepping booze all day every day mm -mm. It, it's there, great, but it is not fun. No, yeah, it can't be. But like, <laughs> and I think that I think that would be for me such a such a fun thing is that design phase. Was there anybody that like you saw? Like maybe there was a. Dis I mean, obviously, you don't have to name specifics, but like, was there like a, a, a distiller that you had in your mind um, that like when you like, that you visited or that any like that you've worked with that like or that you I like I like that aesthetic. I like the design. I like the way that uh, you know different things were set up. Was there any like inspiration like that? No, absolutely. Um, and you go back to Wilderness Trail and Shane and Pat. They, I really like the way they operated. I really like their, you know, their clean steam boilers. You know, there's no chemicals getting anywhere in the process. Um, they're also thoughtful too, being low pressure steam and safety. And for me, it was there's kind of this old school, new school, right in the space, and and they were kind of the and we say new school, right? They were over a decade old now, but the way they were doing things with sweet mash and, and enzymes and, and yeast strains was just so cool to to me. And I just liked the way that, you know, it was still close to tradition and history, but hey, there's also maybe a better way to do things. Yeah. Um, and so that, that really was inspirational for me. And, and Shane was just really so i mean we cut up all the circles i mean drew it up on i mean literally napkins and you start That's looking cool. at it like well, why are you doing that or why you do that so it was really cool just to get that perspective from from those guys from the distillery that we had a lot of respect for and that we thought and i thought were kind of doing things the right way yeah. day in and day out with no shortcuts so Nice. I would have to say, yeah, the Wilderness Trail guys for yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, 
now I want to get nerdy real quick with you, if that's okay. Um, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I'm to me, like when it comes to like the process, like to me, that's like the most interesting. Like, you guys use a, it's, it's Vendome crap, uh, copper and brass works, right? That you guys use for your stills. Yep. Correct. Um, so I guess if I was to walk in the distillery, what would I see? Like uh, even uh, you guys have two Rick houses, I think it is. We have three rick houses. We have two houses. two column stills. Two um, columns, yeah, two hundred ten acres, eighteen wow. fermenters, eighteen twenty thousand gallon fermenters, four small ones. thousand gallon so, cooker. Not bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh, it does sound small. So of the independent distillers in the country, you know, Heaven Hill, us, I guess Wilderness Trail, maybe not anymore, but I think we account for about twelve percent of the. The country's bourbon production on the independent wow. side. Yeah. Wow. That's saying That's, something. Yeah. Is. And I would imagine we're, you know, top 10, top 12 in the country, if not the world. I mean, you're destroying my distillery. So thank you for That's that. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we're here to help you. <laughs> not oh. you. I have. I don't think my owner would be very happy if I said yes to that comment. So I'm going to keep my mouth <laughs> shut. I understand. <laughs> and, um, and I, like, I, I've been actually, and, and Adrian and myself, we've been touring around a couple of different distilleries in our area. And like, for some reason, something that I'm very interested in whenever I go into places is, is when you talk about like the ferment fermentation things, are you guys doing open air fermentation or no? Yeah, they're open top for Are they open? That's yep. nice. I like that. I think I think there's something that is very different about the whiskeys that I've tasted from places that do that versus places that don't do that. Um, let let the elements come in there and do their thing. I think it's uh, yep. it adds it adds something different to me. And I, the more and more that I see the ones that do it, so I was curious if you guys did too. I was trying to look no. it up, but I couldn't find anything. So yeah, no, it's open top. I think it certainly adds some sense of terroir to to the yeah. distillate, right? Being open top and your particular geography wherever it may be nice um but yeah you're you guys got to come see the place it's pretty cool i'd love to yeah i, I, I was looking absolutely at, love that i was looking at pictures i'm like this is a beautiful <laughs> distillery that's why i was I so curious that. about yeah i uh, think i'll be out there in september sometime so I'll, I'll make some plans to drive down yeah come on i'm there the first week of september so i will happy not to, happy to have you <laughs> so You'll enjoy it. It's really two distilleries under one roof. Um, I really wanted to be, I, I've probably been in every distillery in Kentucky. And you know what you find a lot of times is parts and pieces are compartmentalized. You know, you kind of see the steel, but you don't get to go in the steel house. You see the guys rolling the barrel, but you don't get to necessarily go in the rick house. And so what I wanted to do is really just, you know, pull the curtain back. And when you're in our facility, you're hundred percent immersed in, in the process, no matter where you are. So you pull up, you'll see the columns, you know, right in the front, you walk in, you see the fermentation areas and you can see all the way through the distillery front to back. Uh, and then we have windows on East and West wings too, and compartmentalized where the, the office space is. So you can see all the way through from, say the tasting room visitor center all the way through the steel house to the fermentation room. It's just really cool space. It's kind of a, it's a workhorse, you know, blue collar workhorse distillery. I, it's funny you say that. Cause I was just thinking I've always wanted to roll a barrel. I know they're heavy. I know they're big. I just have, <laughs> I've just always wanted to do that. I don't, I know that's probably not an option, but I just had to no, throw it out there. That is definitely an option. It's we, awesome. We bring people in. That's that's just one less barrel we had to work on. Um, okay, I'll do I'll do a couple if you want me to. I just have always wanted to do that. We're yeah. happy to, and that was what we wanted really is to give people that immersive experience that you don't really get anymore. Um, and that's because the guys have just gotten so big, and so many people are coming through. And I don't think we'll always be able to do it, but right now we're we're certainly doing it. Are you guys, um, I know you guys, it seems like the focus right now is on bourbon, but is there any, uh, like I know like obviously like the American single malt boom sort of happening. Is there any thoughts of doing something like that? Absolutely. In fact, I would say we're probably uh, over the course of time, by this time next year, I would say we'd probably be the single largest single malt producer in the country. Ooh. 
Okay. So we're we're made, we are may we've made probably I don't know close to a thousand barrels now, but we've had a lot of really good feedback. Um, nice. Single malt is just it's incredible. Um, I'm not a single it. guy per se. Um, That's okay, Ray. Right? I'm not either. <laughs> we busted it up in third, so we've used uh, used barrels. Um, okay. bourbon, okay. barrels, bourbon barrels, we use X rum barrels, and then I have a third in um, their lightly toasted char four 59 gallon the hogsheads. And the barrels, Ooh. the single malt coming out of that, it's just it's crazy how good it is. Speaking so, I'm going to come out the first soul, week right? of September now, screw my 10 year, yeah. yeah, forget, forget, they don't need, you don't need to go there, yeah, they, you don't, they don't there. need me, you don't need to go there, who cares. Um, you, can go, you can go after you get some single ball. Yeah. Ugh. yeah. Get fired. Uh, what, what, <laughs> what kind of, where, where are you guys getting uh, rum barrels? Where are you sourcing rum barrels? If you can talk about it, obviously. So we have a third party guy that gets them for us and they're from all over, you know, Barbados. Barbados. You, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I, nice. That's awesome. Yeah. I've been getting, I, I really, I love a good rum finished single malt. I'm a big Scotch fan. So, um, and some of the ones, especially like the single grains, with uh with uh that are finishing rum barrels too i've been getting into a lot lately just the flavor profile is insane coming off of some flavor of those profiles insane. Yeah, it's insane that, yeah. <laughs> we'd be happy to we'd be happy to have you and we've got all kinds of projects but we've really kind of doubled down on it we've got nice. two pretty big uh production customers that are all purchasing single malt and i think you'll see over the next eight to ten years if that thing just kind of explodes yeah. And then we're, we're we're behind the bar, right? Jim Beam, those guys, they've been making for seven, eight years now. So, yeah, I mean, you're not too far behind the bar if you're already producing a thousand yeah. barrels. So, yeah, yeah. and especially <laughs> by the by the time it gets its own um, category and its own distinction, when American Single Malt finally does get that, hopefully, I think that you'll see a lot of people uh, uh, coming in for that. So it's good that you guys are sort of out ahead of it, um, because I feel like there's just going to be a bombarded with a, people making American single malts left and right. And I, I, I hope that it's a little bit more defined than it currently is. Um, so just to give it its own character and its own thing, because obviously if you, the, the, the minute you think about single malt, you think about Scotland. And uh, I, I think they like to have its own distinctions and its own uh, rules and regulations would be very handy. So I know that they're working on that right now. So I'm curious. I'm, what you said piqued my curiosity. I would, I would love that. I love that you're using um, ex bourbon too, because that is such that is definitely more of like the Scottish way to do it than the the new American oak and yeah, which is fine. I have some good stuff, but I, I I'm curious to see how it reacts like that to me. So yeah, yeah. Well, we want to make a distinct Kentucky single malt whiskey, mm -hmm. and I think that, like I said, over the next couple of years, I think we'll solidify ourselves as the largest producer of American single malt in the country. Um, super super excited for that so yeah well, happy to have you send us uh send us your address i'll send you some samples yeah. of what we've thus far oh absolutely absolutely oh no that would be so awful <laughs> <laughs> at least for two of us the third one on here would not like hey, adrian yeah, yeah. Well, adrian, we're gonna, like we're gonna get her into that you know what it is She's I, like, we're trying yeah i i you like, like the my... taste you like it, the them. taste is not bad. Yeah. It just doesn't. I get a headache from single malts usually. Um, have you tried drinking less of it? <laughs> <laughs> just I mean, you, throw that I, mean out there. Uh, I mean, like to be fair, the well, time that it, you did it, try it, you over tried it. So <laughs> in, in in all fairness, I haven't had a lot of it. Okay. okay. So every time yeah. I've tried it, I've had bourbon other things with it other things with it yeah. it's usually just a pour of it so i haven't had it in okay. large quantities yeah. but it I just like always I, seems I, like go ahead no i just like how you're justifying this right now it's cracking me up because you're just like i, I drink well, a lot that night but i'm gonna blame the I, single malts for my hangover right uh, yeah i <laughs> i had nine bourbons with that one single malt <laughs> <laughs> you guys are calling me out here but I, you know what to be dude. fair saturday night i had a little bit to drink and i drank all whiskey and i did not or all bourbon and i did not have a headache the next day so i'm just okay. saying my doing. experience with single malt has been that way but so yeah. ray we always ask an uh a quote squirrel question a kind of off the wall 
question. Uh, so okay. this this Let's week it's my turn. So I got a question for you. Okay. If you were reincarnated as a squirrel in the next life, what state would you live in, and would you live in a dry county? If I were reincarnated, what state would I live in, and would I live in a dry county? Yeah. So Ray, I, <laughs> yeah. I, Ray, I actually came up with this one so Adrian could say it. Um, I put the dry county thing because I figured there'd be less fast cars down the street and squirrels got to dodge. You know what I mean? So uh, <laughs> I feel like that it might be safe. Yes. It might be safer for them. So that's why. Yeah. Just to give you context there. Um, I, well, I would move to Kentucky. I live in Georgia. That's where I'd live. And uh, mm -hmm. no, no to the dry county. OK. Amen. Unless the city was wet, then maybe. OK. Drunken squirrels. <laughs> I, yeah, I ain't living in no dry county. I watch them. <laughs> I've lived. I lived in a dry county twice in my life. I lived in Texas, <laughs> and uh, I didn't know that it was until I moved there. Um, but to be fair, there was like a liquor store within like ten minutes, uh, like uh, away from. I was in uh, uh, McKinney, Texas, and so mm -hmm. McKinney, Texas, like basically that whole like north of Dallas is all There's dry. Dry county counties in yeah, Texas. That, I was about to say that's rare. You pick up right? a dry county in yeah. Texas. But like Plano is like right there, so yeah. it was fine. And I was right, really. to, yeah, it yeah, wasn't that. Crazy. I, I just, I just wish we had drive-through liquor stores, but we don't. Texas has that. <laughs> well, there's a handful uh, of them here in the great state of Georgia. Yeah, yeah. Georgia yeah, has them too. I'm, I, we're in Martin and I are in Indiana, and we don't have drive-through liquor stores. Apparent, unfortunately, they just no. started selling alcohol on Sunday, not that long ago. So I probably yeah. shouldn't be too. I probably should be wow. thankful for like, that. We have like we have like <laughs> drive-through cigarette stores. Like I, you figure like we you do? know, yeah, there's tons out here. Yeah, I, mean, uh. I don't smoke cigarettes, but like I've seen them. Okay. So yeah, you're you yeah. are closer to Chicago than me, so that would explain that. That is true. You got to get your cigarettes <laughs> faster, man. Come on. Well, that got dark. Um. <clears throat> <sighs> Adrian, you got um. Yeah, I can. I mean, I can ask the we'll that one. We'll do the that one. Other one. one. I like that one. I do like that one. So, Ray, we also like to ask. Earlier, you were talking about the people, and mm -hmm. that's the whole reason I'm here. I, you know, for me, whiskey is just way, way, way more about the people than it is about the juice. So, um, we always like to ask people if they have a favorite memory or a favorite experience sur that surrounds whiskey and it could be from when you were a child and it had to do with a parent or something like that or anything well i that one's pretty easy for me i i remember the it, november 7th of 2015 2016 we rolled off the first barrel there in in Dahlonega, Georgia with Dave. And it was me and Dave and Jeff Odom. Um, and I mean, we're just filthy. We literally put the place together with our own hands. And, you know, to sit there with, uh, you know, Dave, he's, say what you want about Dave, all of us have our faults and or, or whatever. But to, to, to be able to have a dram, you know, around that, that first barrel with him and one of your best friends, uh, after, you know, years of hard work to, to get there. Um, it was pretty, it's pretty amazing, you know, to talk about the past and then, you know, what's happening with us today. And then, you know, our thoughts of the future at that time, I would have never guessed, you know, that day we would have the distillery we have today. Um, but just man, yeah, hopes and dreams over a dram after your first barrel made to, you know, when I was the sweat and not the equity and, you know, probably couldn't have bought a damn Honda Civic back then. And now, you know, own one of the largest distilleries in the country. Mm. That's uh, it's a pretty cool experience to have with those guys on those days. Yeah. To experience something like that. And then to have it be with the people that, you know, mean the most. I mean, that's huge. That's like a, it's kind of like a legacy in some ways, you know? I'd say that's the American dream, isn't it? it is. Yeah. 
Well, I have a Honda Civic, so. <laughs> <laughs> right. You're on car. your way, Martin. <laughs> it's a good car. <laughs> it's, it lasts a long time. It costs yeah, it's, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good, good <laughs> gas mileage. <laughs> like, That's it. I've driven one or two. Uh, I love that. I think we the reason why we love that question so much is because we this is uh, I think you're coming in our what is it is sixteenth episode, sixteenth. Oh, wow. So sixteen. At least as as us as being hosts, um, but we've got so many amazing stories from that question, and I think you've just added to that. Um, and I think that that's such a cool one is, is is thinking about that very first barrel, and I think that's such a cool answer to that. So we've really got to add a bunch of amazing answers to that question. So we appreciate you. I appreciate y'all. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah it's been fun. Well, now Martin, you, it's that time you again. Do one from uh, from the distillery. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah that's uh, if they can't make it, I will. I'll do well, it. I know, I'm not. I, I well. can drive there. It's not far. Yeah, it's not far. And I know that. I know that. <laughs> I, I I do believe next year there's going to be a a big Kentucky trip that uh, us and like our big group of friends here on Instagram are going to be um, doing like a big trip down to Kentucky. So we'll definitely have to uh, we'll definitely have to reach out and let you know when we're coming. Please do. We'd love to host yeah. you. Yeah, that'd Thank be amazing. You. Thank you so much, Ray. Ray, we just got to do one last thing, and then we're going to send <laughs> you off with smiles and good times and. Hopefully, that sounds like I need to send you a bottle of my stuff and just mm -hmm. trade off because now I feel bad for not sending you one. Oh, so man. we got to get you some single malt too, Mark. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. No, honestly, we have to. Brian would like some that. too. Yeah, Brian you, would. Too. You know, my last name is just Doer. It's... <laughs> yeah, you should send him some too. D E W A R. Definitely send it some your way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Am I am I doing this, Brian? You got to yeah. do it. It's your. I'm going to do I got to do it. Okay. We do want to give a shout out to our sponsors. And guys, listen, um, I love 10th Mountain Whiskey. I'm not just saying that because Brian's sitting here. I actually had it this weekend. Um, I made cocktails out of it. I had it neat. I had, I didn't have it on ice, uh, but I imagine it's very good on all such things. And if you guys want to know more about 10th Mountain Whiskey, you can go to 10thwhiskey.com. They are available in 40 different states through online distribution as well as 28, 26 states. Uh, through regular retail distribution. Go on there. They've got merch. I was wearing my shirt yesterday. I fell asleep in it. You can sleep in it. It's a great, it's comfortable. It doesn't oh, have yeah. a tag. It doesn't, it doesn't have a tag. It doesn't have one of those tags on the back. It's like, it's it's very comfortable. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a great uh, co company in general. One of my favorite places in the world. Again, 10thwhiskey.com. Go there. They'll uh, happy to answer any questions that you may have. Again, that is 10thwhiskey.com. Thank you guys for being our sponsors. All right, guys. Ray, thank you so much for coming on. It's been a pleasure. It's been an honor hearing your story, getting your experience from, I, I would I'd love to hear it rags to riches pretty much, right? So going from stocking wine to then spirits industry to then creating your own distillery with some of your friends and then building it to where it is today during the hardest time out there. So absolutely phenomenal of what you're doing. Thank you for supporting your county. Thank you so for supporting this nation and giving such good bourbon as we're drinking it right now um, yeah. and continue to do what you're doing. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, everybody, thank you for joining us wherever you're at in the world. And remember a bourbon with friends can change the world. Have a great day, night, or any time you're at. Thanks. Wherever you are. Cheers. See y'all. Cheers. Good night. That's it for this episode of Bourbon with Friends. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode. While you're at it, leave us a review to make it easier for others to find the show. You can also check us out on Instagram at BWF Podcast. Thanks for listening.